Hi and welcome to today's webinar on the topic of RAIDS, Research Activity Identifiers. So let's get started. So my name is Natasha Simons from the Australian National Data Service or ANS and I'm your host for the webinar today. And my colleague Susanna Sabine is behind the scenes co-hosting the webinar with me. So this webinar will introduce you to RAID, a new addition to the world of persistent identifiers or PIDs, PIDs. RAID stands for Research Activity Identifier and is an ID for research activities which places the project at the centre of the data management life cycle. Our two speakers for today, Dr Andrew Janke and Siobhan McCafferty, are from the Data Lifecycle Framework Project or DLCF for short. And RAID is the first of the DLCF enabling technologies to be developed. So this webinar is the fourth in a series examining persistent identifiers and their use in research. The first webinar looked at citing grey literature using DOIs, and the second introduced the international geosample number for physical samples, uh, and the third explore, explored the global initiative called Scolix, which is linking data and publications. And you can find the recordings of these webinars on the AND YouTube channel. So I'd also like to acknowledge the Commonwealth Government for their support of ANS, Research Data Services and Nectar under the NCRIS program. And now to introduce our speakers for today. Dr Andrew Janke, who is a software architect for the DLCF project and Research Data Services based at the University of Queensland. And Siobhan McCafferty, who is the project manager for the DLCF project and, the Australian, and works for the Australian Access Federation in Brisbane. So I'll now hand over to Andrew and Siobhan. I'm going to start with a few horror stories because that's always fun. Some of the things the DLCF project tried to solve or had a look at when we talked to universities at the start was what are some of the problems you are having? And there were People express multiple things. Um, a lot of things are around lost data. People couldn't access data. And what it came down to in the end is that universities had no great way of identifying what a project was. There was a good notion of what a project was within an institution, but the best research is done collaboratively. So people wanted to be able to get around this problem somewhere. And what came out of that is that we knew we needed a project ID. We looked around to see what was available internationally. We couldn't find much. Uh, we talked to the ORCID group and their advice to us was have a go, so we did. And we came up with the notion of RAID, which is a research activity ID. We actually started with project IDs, but what it was semantically associated with project was a problem, so we backed off to research IDs. Um, one of the things we also knew from the start is that researchers do a lot of things. Um, some of the things are on the screen there, and unfortunately often doing research is the small component. And we knew that researchers also, from their feedback, had a lot of what they call black holes. So they were reporting into a lot of systems already, so in grants and finance and publications. And the last thing we wanted to do was develop yet another system around RAIDs where re researchers had to report information into without getting any benefit. Um, we know there's a number of systems around already for recording what projects are about, and typically around outputs only. And we sort of took this view of research is that what we tend to publish is, you know, the nice shiny vision that what happens in the basement is probably only half the story of the working data to what actually goes on underneath that. Often who really knows what goes on in a project. So we knew we had to keep all these things in mind. Um, I'm going to get on my soapbox now and say from the start of this project, we were very keen to say that research data is associated with projects and not people. And this is because we're in the situation where institutions are responsible for the outputs of research beyond the time when the researchers are left. So we knew we had to structure the rate identifier around that idea. If I look at my you know, very simple diagram, we all tend to draw a drawer of how the research life cycle works is we have it in our heads that people are going to fill out a data management plan at the start of their research and then they're going to do something, they're going to put some data somewhere, they're going to produce outputs. We know this doesn't necessarily work, but if you look at the existing tools out there like DMP tool, Figshare and DMP online, who we could use as a project ID, we recognise that these tools were starting to work on the data really towards the publication and output stage. They're trying to change this now, a lot of these tools around where they actually interact with researchers, but for the moment, I would put them in the outreach side. The problem is research probably looks more like this. Um, and it meant that we weren't really covering or looking for IDs and issues around research data 
that happened at the start of the process. So I've drawn a little black cloud over here of the part we're probably not capturing well. So we knew we had to change the language a little bit when we go out and talk to people about research activities, IDs, and that is we're not talking about a project repository or a repository software tool like Big Share or one of these. We're talking about research lifecycle management and we're talking about attaching identifiers throughout this process. So it's about attaching the idea to a RAID identifier at the start when a researcher has an idea or wants to get some storage in their institution and they use a DMR system, a data management record system, to provision some storage to their project or the project they're associated with. And the idea is, is if we can get this, get the RAID identifier attached to all parts of the life cycle, we can't necessarily join everything up yet but at least we can find it. So we're about attacking the F and the A part of FAIR. I think IR will come in time, but if we can just attack findable and accessible, I think we'll have done very well. Another thing we knew we had to do is that change some of the language around what people say a project is. The existing view of a lot of projects like ORCID is that a project is a noun, it's a thing describing something that's, that happened. For us in RAID or in DLCF, project is a verb, it's a continually evolving project which RAID continues to associate it with and the various touch points that researchers interact with, with things that help them get their research done. So we knew we had to build a system that was essentially transparent to researchers and that would just happen by the infrastructure in the background. So I'll now let Siobhan take over. So Following from uh, identifying a lot of these, these issues, um, the data lifecycle framework um, started to come up with what we called enabling technologies. So the DLCF has a little bit of background. It's a national strategy to connect research um, infrastructure uh, through some of the ingress e-science capabilities. Um, we've got five stakeholders who will be easily recognisable, RDS, AF, RNET, NICTA and ANS. And all of these groups do different things. So those capacities, sorry, uh, influenced uh, what the, the DLCF decided to focus on. So our enabling technologies are cloud-based connectors and identifiers for research data tools, uh, storage and outputs. The first of those was uh, identified as a project ID, which became RAID. The second, a group ID and group management service. And the third, a metadata store and APIs. So today we're talking about um, about RAID mainly. But the need for these um, persistent identifiers um, was because we needed a really simple tool. We needed something that connected things up without being heavy, um, heavy software or being very taxi for, for researchers or for the uh, institutions themselves. And it had to be something that could be quite responsive, uh, semi-automated. So we, we wanted a PID and the, the benefits are standardization of metadata, mechanism for creating a persistent chain of provenance, supports fair principles, lightweight flexible tool and facilitates rich data linkage. RAID is simply put, it's a handle, it's minted via ANS um, and attached to it is what we call the DMR which is the RAID metadata manifest. So the manifest contains uh, other persistent IDs related to the project, so DOIs, ORCIDs, other RAIDs, potentially group IDs, tools and service IDs, and any other rich metadata that the, the service provider uh, as the, the point at which the RAID is created wants to include in there. So I'll show you what a RAID looks like um, on a conceptual level. You can see on the left here we've got the RAID number, it's really simple. Service point, day, month and year that that's minted. Attached to it we have this, these potential spaces, so space for the group ID which can include ORCIDs or email. Um, DOI, grids or ISNES, tools, services and other RAIDs. And further kind of abstracted out, you can see what could go in there, what they can do with it. And here's an, an example. So the RAID being a, a simple handle has attached to it actually a lot of information. It doesn't hold any of the information. Um, we don't hold any data. It's just metadata. It's a bag of pointers that gives you a timeline of, of what's happened during the project as process. And what we hope is by the use of simple things like persistent IDs, that we can link up all of this pre-existing infrastructure, uh, semi-automate things, make research easier and make tracking research easier.
for institutions that gives you improved visibility of research activity components, so the people, the tools, processes, storage and outputs involved in each project, gives you an audit trail for research processes, and it improves the visibility of collaborations across institutions. But infrastructure, you get metrics for use and connections, you can automate storage and provisioning, you can also automate allocations, storage and compute, and you can access authorization. You can automate access and authorization. Cool. So that, that's me. Thanks very much. So I'll just ask, you both have been talking a lot about raids at conferences and events for a little while now. What sort of um, feedback have you had from people on, on raids? What sort of questions do you get asked? Yeah, so I can ask, answer that from a, the technical point of view. Um, people are interested in how long it takes to integrate with with the RAID system because it obviously means changes in how they do policy at their institution and it needs institutional uptake. When it gets down to the actual technical implementation because we've designed RAID to be more machine to machine rather than a, a manual service, the feedback we get is that the integration time is very short. It's not a hard thing to do. What is always hard is getting the policy and the agreement in place that this is a good thing. Um, with respect to the feedback we've got from institutions around is RAID a good idea, I think the answer is a resounding yes, um, in that they know they need something to identify projects across institutions, but again, implementation um, and all the, all the things around inertia of large organisations. We've actually gained, even you know, pauper in your own country, we've gained a, a lot better uptake and feed, feedback in some ways from New Zealand than we have from Australia. Um, this is probably because of their different approach to things. So in New Zealand, many may know that the uptake of ORCID was driven by the department rather than by the institutions. So the department said, MBIE said, this is a good idea. We, we will help all our institutions go forward with this. And we're looking as to whether we can do the same thing around RAID. So we know that the New Zealand Department of Education is interested in developing a project idea across all their institutions. So they see this as perhaps a good way to do that. So we get many, many and varied feedback. We get even some researchers who say the really, I wouldn't say the clever ones, but the ones who are the converters, they want to do this stuff and they say, how do we integrate? And for the moment, we really can't help them much because we're not aiming the service at researchers right now. This is something that should happen in the background without them having to put any effort into it and it should just make their life easier. And that was the goal of it. But that means that in order to provide a level of trust around the RAID providers and the RAID IDs, it means we must have agreements in place with the service providers who are linking to RAID. So that doesn't exclude researchers, but it gives them a different level of access to what they might have expected. Well, follow-up question. I, I think you've probably answered this, but are RAIDs only for projects at Australian institutions? No, uh, at the moment we, we're starting the ISO process for RAID, so it will be an international standard, um, be an ANZ standard and then an international standard. So it was begun with the intent that it was international um, because researchers work internationally, they're not just working in Australia. So uh, yeah, it's international. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question, accessing the RAID API, will it be publicly available? That's the first part of the question. Yes, definitely. Um, if there's a chat thing in here, I'll type it in right now where you can go have a look. Um, it's api.ray.org.au. Um, if you... Oh, api.ray.org.au. I think people can yep. get that. And we will, we can also yeah, send that, that, we can also send that link around anyway um, with yeah. the follow-up recording. People who are interested in looking at that a bit more, if you add ui.api.ray.org.au, there's a, a pretty version of the API which allows you to interact with it and see interactively what you're doing. Now, to get beyond the initial part, you will need a key. And if you need that, contact us. Through the RAID website. Through the RAID website. Through the RAID the RAID website. Is there. And we will provide you with a trial key which doesn't require anything beyond it's a trial system. Yeah. Okay, so at the moment people don't need to register to have a look at that. They can just, they can actually access the API as it is, yes, but if they, yeah. they can contact you. Yeah. 
Okay, so next part of that question is, are you aware of how many systems have integrated with RAID so far? And do you have yes. any exemplars? Um, it, we, we're very aware of it. So RAID was launched in April and it has a small amount of, of people who are integrated with, with it so far. Um, probably the best example is UQ's new um, IDN system, um, which Andrew is involved with. So uh, the DMP kind of tool for UQ is, has been updated uh, and has integrated RAID and storage provisioning, which comes out of that. So that's a pretty good example. Um, also, probably uh, Redbox Wrap, um, which is Redbox have, have made for us a very lightweight version of Redbox, um, the research activity portal, which has integrated RAID capability um, that's available. And anyone can have a go. Anyone with an AAF credential can use Redbox Wrap. So that's a minimal DMR system that will allow you to put in the minimal information, so a project title and maybe an institution and a few people and that will generate a RAID for your project around that DMR. So that's accessible as well. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so if somebody wanted now to mint a RAID or start minting RAIDs, how would they go about doing that? Well, um, if you're an individual, uh, it's, it's something that your institution or research group should do for you. So we talk about service providers. Uh, or service points, and that, that can mean any platform with integrated RAID capability. So if I as a researcher saw that it was useful to have a RAID, I would go and hopefully um, talk to my data management planning uh, team or talk to whoever runs my, my Thingatron and have them integrate RAID into their, their management processes and have a RAID minted um, via that. It's not something you do yourself, um, it should be through your institution because we need that, that really rich metadata that comes out of I'm a researcher from here, I'm using this piece of machinery, these are the people involved in my project, um, they're not intended to be this is my project, it's intended to be this is a project I've worked on. Okay and so RAID at its basis is a, is a handle so when you click on the handle what, what page does that, how does that resolve, what does that resolve to? I guess the magical content provider string that is required by ANDS for people who meet a, meet a handle. Yes. So the handles will resolve. Now they resolve to a page on the RAID website which essentially said this RAID is valid or not. Now it's a decision by the service providers or the institutions that in time we model the underlying data structure of the information about a project on the RIF CS service activity, RIF CS schema, sorry. This means that in time, if a institution chooses to make information about a project public, then that handle will resolve to the service record within RDA. And we will update it then. And obviously we'll migrate the information into the service record in the public section of Research Data Australia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything further you'd like to add? We've come to the end of questions. Is there anything? No, but we're keen to hear from anyone who'd like to have a go at integrating uh, the RAID API into their institutional or research group's workflows. Um, the more people that use it, the more useful it becomes. So we're looking at the moment at um, improving uptake uh, in Australia uh, and in the rest of the world. So if you're interested, drop us a line. Uh, and no cost to you. In fact, we sometimes give people money. So, <laughs> um, say that a bit more. Um, yeah, we want more people to, to use it. It's, it's federally backed. It's not going anywhere. It's a really useful little thing. Um, have a go. Okay, and it's raid.org.au. Is that the website address? Yeah. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. And just a reminder that this is one as part of the Persistent Identifiers webinar series. You can look out in the ANS online news or on our website for an announcement of the next webinar in the series, but that will not be until next year now. And thank you again to Andrew and Siobhan for making the time to give their webinar today. Thanks. Bye all.